The only easy day was yesterday. Welcome to The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. A crucial part of any naval special warfare mission is the covert insertion and extraction of operators, especially at night or under fire. The team responsible for this, SWIC, or Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewmen, are trained extensively in how to pilot and maintain special boats and their weapons. They are physically fit, highly motivated, combat-focused, and responsive in high-stress situations. They frequently work with the Navy SEALs. Today, we speak with Bill, the SWIC Instructor of the Year, who is also responsible for the first block of SWIC training, called Basic Crewman Selection. Let's get started. Well, first, I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. I know you're a pretty busy guy. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, if you could start by introducing yourself and, and letting the audience know, you know, what you, who you are and a little bit about what you do. Yes, I'm Petty Officer First Class Bill. I'm an instructor here at a, the SWIC Schoolhouse, specifically our selection phase, which we call BCS, standing for Basic Crewman Selection. So what does it mean to be an instructor here? An instructor, what that means here is that we are the primary role of, of conducting evolutions for the, the students and anything and everything that's required for the, the students to get through our, our schoolhouse. Very nice. And I think you, you left out something in your introduction. You're not just any instructor, you're the instructor of the year. Yes, I was fortunate enough to be to be awarded the Instructor of the Year. I got a lot of help from a lot of guys previous to me to, to get that award. What does that mean? Well, what those qualities would mean to me personally is that you are the example for what you would want a candidate to become. Mm -hmm. So anything ranging from character and competence is what we always hit for students. That's what we're looking for. So we're demonstrating that ourselves with our personal leadership, team ability, with how we are physically on evolutions, our personal fitness, our, our knowledge, everything that we want out of the students that we are demonstrating that ourselves. Okay. Um, how did you decide to go SWIC? Where did that come from, the motivation? I decided to go SWIC about 10 years ago when it was actually through a YouTube video showing the capabilities and everything going on with the the riverine aspect of SWIC. I saw that video, I was interested in military before, kind of just cruising through, looking at different special operations positions, I, that's what I was into, and I saw that one and I was, I was immediately hooked. Awesome. I think we should pause for a second to let anyone listening know where we're sitting, because they're probably going to be hearing some sounds around here. Can you tell us what we're looking at over here? Yeah, so right now we're, we're sitting at what we call here Pier 4 in the slab. It's a it's a main spot that we conduct a lot of our training here at the basic crewman selection phase of the SWIC schoolhouse where they do many different physical activities. They, they, they start their underways here and they perform countless swims down here. So if, if anyone chooses to go the SWIC route, they would be spending many hours where we're currently sitting. Nice. Well, before we start talking about what actually happens when you go SWIC, I want to just start by asking you if, if someone's interested in going that direction, what do you think the best first step is? The best first step to become a, uh, in, if you're interested in becoming a SWIC is first looking up all the open source information out there on what a SWIC means. What does it mean to become a SWIC? Because the first step is making sure that that's what you really want to do. It's a great job and there's, there, you know, there's a lot of good things about it, but you first need to know what it is and why you want to do it. And then you start going, getting into the details of precise things you need to do to prepare. So to get to that stage, what, what is the course like that people have to go through? The, the first course would be the physical preparation. Okay. So actually on the Sealed SWIC website, there's an extensive amount of information on what physical standards someone should be at to be properly prepared and that's where you would first want to look to see the 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 running time should you should have swimming push-ups pull-ups sit-ups general body calisthenics 
-hmm. that, that someone should be at so that they have a good shot at making it through. Okay. And can you describe that it's a seven-week course? BCS is a seven-week course. Okay. So could you walk us through that course? So uh, when someone comes to training, with a, when they start BCS, the first week is a large amount of different physical evolutions that we test their personal grit, their team ability, and it has a, a small amount of classroom instruction revolving around uh, coastal navigation. Okay. So there's a lot of different physical evolutions um, based off things such as running, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups. There's a lot of swimming. There is a lot of team building um, exercises with, with small boats that they all have to um, maneuver together, hold together, do different relay races that force a lot of teamwork. Is it, that, uh, before we move on to the next phase, personal grit, that's an interesting phrase. Grit would be a huge factor for our selection course. Um, not the only one, but it is a primary factor. And the, the entire course is both developing and testing grit. So it's a combination of we're selecting those with enough grit and, and uh, we are developing grit at the same time. So that, that is throughout and it changes on how we do it. And week one is mainly through those physical evolutions with a small amount of classroom instruction. Okay. And the next, so then the, the next two weeks, week two and three are similar. However, it changes into less on the physical we start introducing more classroom time because there there is a large amount of academic learning they need to know before we get underway on the on the boats so we have to start from square one on everything to do with navigation the fundamentals of the the craft that they're going to be on and basic seamanship okay. so we get into that on weeks two and three while at the same time still having the the physical grit side, but now they have the academic side as well. Mm -hmm. and, and and you bring up a point, which is that they haven't even touched a boat yet. At not this point. yet, not yet. Even though the you know boats are the main objective, but you got to get through this before you can. Correct, okay. correct. So they they have quite a bit. Of, they have a steep learning curve to to even get to that point. Okay. So we don't just jump immediately onto it. Then when we get into week four is our underway week. We also have physical test gates. Okay. So it's less about grit building on this week and it's more about performance. So we're gonna be executing everything we've learned and you're also gonna to have to execute um, your, your physical performance on this week. So both, we start getting underway, start doing all the basic underways, mainly revolving around navigation, but we also do anchoring, towing, hull inspections, some other fundamental seamanship skills. At the end of that week, then week five is our is our crucible week. We have the tour. And then the Crucible week. Yes. Okay. So the Why is it called that? It's not called the, the Crucible. <laughs> oh, okay. So it is called the tour. Okay. Week five <laughs> has the tour and what I meant by that is that that is what basic crewman selection is leading up to. Okay. So the first four weeks is all leading up to the week of the tour where they put together everything that they've been learning and we call it a day in the life of a boat guy. Mm -hmm. So it's three days of minimal sleep, testing them on everything they've been learning and a huge amount of physical activity. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be wet, cold, tired, and tested for three days straight. Talk about grit. Yes. Jeez. So once they get through that week, there's a phase line b within BCS. So that's when the students get their brown shirts. They transition from white shirts to brown shirts, and then that's a symbolic uh, transition that they have been selected for, for further training. So they've made it through our tour, and those students have demonstrated the capability and grit to transition into the next phase of training. It so is if still, anyone happens to be walking around Coronado and sees a bunch of guys go by in brown shirts, that means they have... They know that they've made it through the tour. Okay. Then we transition to week six. And week six is when we start getting into more advanced skills. It's still fundamental. 
and we get into basic driving. Up to this point, the students haven't been driving at all. All they've been doing is the navigational side, learning the fundamentals of what an engine is and everything else. So we start off the week with teaching about maintenance on crafts, official maintenance, and and how to drive the craft. We, we start off with the smallest craft we have in our inventory. It's a small rubber craft where it is called a CRRC, Combat R Rubber Rating Craft, and it uses a small 55 horsepower outboard motor. So we put that on the back of this small craft and they practice basic maneuvering, driving straight, doing different turns, mooring up onto the side of other boats or piers, and the fundamentals there with driving. That's how this week goes. It's different underways, a lot more classroom now. Min the PTs go into more of um, the, on the minimal side. They, they're always going to PT for their entire SWIC career. Then we're transitioning into week seven, and that's the last week of basic crewman selection. And during this week, we we culminate everything that they've learned and we do what's called an FTX, and that's a final training exercise. So they get taught some basic mission planning. They know how to drive these small CRRCs, and we give them a mission, and they go ahead and execute this mission under instructor um, surveillance and we, we grade them and and that is the culmination of everything that they've done in BCS wow. so they get to see and execute what all their hard work has led to Wow and of all these stages would you say there there are one or two where you you lose the most amount of people? Absolutely, so we you lose the most people during week one and week five. So week one being the first week of BCS, it's a, it's a shock to a lot of candidates that come through and it's a, it's a steep curve for many people and then we also leave a, lose a significant amount during the tour where they go three days straight and they're on minimal sleep, cold, wet, and tired the entire time. So what would your advice be for someone uh, knowing that? You know, you're on the other side now, you can see what holds people back. My advice would be starting from the time that you want to become a SWIC, developing grit within yourself. So there's great information out there publicly, open source, they could just check out right on the SEAL SWIC website on what they should be doing to physically prepare. Mm -hmm. And they, you need to immediately start working towards those targets and if you hit those targets, exceed those targets, never be satisfied, and every single day be building a habit of grit. And they can do that indirectly, even though they don't have these exact tools, just through their lifestyle. When they're working now, are they truly pushing themselves? Or do they listen to that little voice in their head that you know tells them that they wanna stop or slow down and, and, and do that? Are they, do they set themselves a rigid schedule or are they letting themselves just wake up every day in the morning whenever they want to? Are they doing everything they can to start having a lifestyle of grit is what I would suggest to anyone that wanted to become a, become a SWIC. Lifestyle of grit, I like yes. it. What did you do to, to get to this place? How did you prepare before you, when you decided you wanted to go that direction? Ten years ago, there wasn't the SEAL SWIC website with as much information. Wikipedia had the, the entrance scores required. I was working at the time, so I would wake up before work to go use the pool every day and, and just work out twice a day until I came in. I, would, I, would, um, I had quite a big deficit to do with things like pull-ups and other upper body physical because I grew up playing soccer. So that was where I had the biggest improvement that I had to make. The running, um, I had to mainly just maintain. At the time, I was a decent runner, so I was still working on it. However, the, the swimming and the upper body strength, I had a, a lot of work to do. So that's where I devoted most of my attention to try to become the best overall possible. That's good to point out to people that might think that because they're not the best swimmer right now, there's no reason they couldn't get there. No, absolutely or, or not. Or any other form of 
Physical. Absolutely not. If, if there's enough time and there's information out there that if this is what you want to do, you anyone out there could, through enough personal effort, become ready. If you haven't ever swam before, there's great information on there on how to swim. They need to learn the combat side stroke and practice it every day until they feel uh, good enough at it and then do it a, a standard amount for the, the workout templates that are out there, maybe three times a day. If they, if they didn't run very much growing up, then they, they're going to need to work on that and usually what's much different for people is being comfortable in the water. I grew up on the west coast, California, so I was able to go into the ocean pretty often, mm. you know, so I had an advantage of being slightly more comfortable in the water mm. than someone that's never been in the water before, so that is, if they don't have access to the ocean, they, they absolutely need to get in the pool as much as possible mm -hmm. and just get um, comfortable in the water and that's by spending more time out in the water. And and it also sounds like you don't necessarily have to know how to drive a boat. To... No, no, so fundamental math skills be, that it is needed for navigation so if you front load that meaning you know if you graduated high school eight years ago and you haven't touched math in a while being able to do everything on paper and not use a calculator long division decimal multiplication those basic skills uh, you know you just need to brush up on real quick mm -hmm. but everything else we will we will teach you here with to do with navigation with the with the boats with engines, with communication radios. The, the training is extensive when they get here and as long as they're willing to pay attention in class and do their homework, they will have ample opportunity to perform at their required needs. Do you think your job is pretty cool? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> it it the looks job, cool from yeah. the outside in. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just what we were saying before with how many jobs out there get to show up each day, work out for a while, and then, you know, essentially practice being, being a team. So it's, you, you feel like you're in a team each day where you show up, work out, and then just refine your skill sets. And it's, 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 it's great each day. What about when you're actually on a mission of some sort? What do you mean by that? Could you walk us through what that is like a, just a little bit of the highlights. I know you can't talk about all of it, but. It could drastically change depending on what type of mission you're on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the mobility piece, you, you know, it's, it's rewarding to, to know that you're being part of this bigger system of making sure that the objective is met. You know, taking guys where they need to go, bringing them back if they got in trouble and it turns into a, what we would call a hot extract where, you know, you need to make sure to lay down, suppress the fire and get them out of there fast. And there's a lot of different opportunities for SWIC. It's, it's hard to explain. The, the fundamental aspect there is with the, with the small crafts, with taking people where they need to go, doing surveillance with the crafts or anything else that's needed. We also pride ourselves on just being experts in mobility, so if we need to do it in other vehicles such as Humvees, we will. Anything that we need to do to help out, we will. That's interesting, not so, just boats. I didn't... So that's the primary piece, it's the boats, but we are flexible oh. to adjust to whatever is currently needed. How do you select? someone so, after all of the seven week process like what you know say someone gets through the whole thing is there a reason you might still not want them on your team yes so we we break it down very simple that we select on character and competence so what we mean by that is first with the character is things such as does he have good integrity is he a good team player um, how is his grit can we trust him? Is he going to be a good teammate with us later on? Mm -hmm. Then competence, and that's all about performance. And BCS, that is, how do they do on our evolutions? Can they run fast enough, swim enough, do enough pull-ups, do a fast enough time in the obstacle course? Are they, are, are they passing all the, whatever they're throwing at during the tour? And 
then in, in addition to that the academic side for the SWIC training can they pass our academic tests we do different chart tests in the in the classroom and are they learning what we require them to learn so those but, are it's, but it's probably important to pause and say that you're teaching them everything. We are teaching so, them. So it shouldn't be intimidating. It's more like when you get here, pay attention. Right. <laughs> if they are doing their side, yeah. we prepare them with everything they need to know. And we pride ourselves on being excellent instructors in the, in the classroom and adjusting to the individual students' need with helping out them as much as possible. Yeah. So we don't expect anyone to come here being experts in navigations or knowing the, the inner workings of an engine. We'll get them there. However, they need to do their side and their homework, and this needs to be their life while they're in BCS. And students, candidates that have that mentality that they're all in, and they, this is their, their current dream at the time, and they will succeed if they are willing to, to learn everything they need to learn and have the grit on physical evolutions. On your website, it says, they need to be morally, mentally, and physically qualified. And I think we've talked about mentally and physically quite a bit, but what does morally qualified mean? Morally qualified has to do with the character I was talking about with character and competence. So mm -hmm. one big one's integrity. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of responsibility and trust in our job with what mission set we are expected to perform overseas. So we need to be able to trust a candidate coming through that they're going to be part of this small team a boat crew for example will have anywhere from three to five people on and that's not very many people so yeah. each person's going to have a large amount of responsibility and require a large amount of trust so we need to know that they're going to do the right thing when no one's looking that's what we say mm -hmm. so no matter what they you know they, they will earn our trust and they'll always do the right thing and that's the easiest way, instead of going down into all the different possible situations with the integrity, can we trust them when no one's looking? Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. We pretty much covered what it means to be mentally prepared, but do you have anything, I mean, I feel like that's an important subject to make sure we... Right, mentally prepared is, the, there will be different activities or evolutions that they had not seen or did not prepare exactly for here. Mm -hmm. Besides the fundamentals of you know that you're going to experience running, you know that you're going to have to swim, do the obstacles, push-ups, sit-ups, different activities with, with boats, you know that that's coming, but there's going to be something that that comes that you you weren't exactly ready for and at that moment is when you're truly tested that that you need to be short-sighted and just know that you could get through it and it might feel overwhelming at the time but just push through you know you go through a lot of work on a mission and execute the mission as a SWIC and you everything goes smoothly comes back not too eventful However, in, in, the, in the time where you're needed the most, it will be a very stressful situation where you got to have a lot of mental fortitude to know that you're going into a real bad situation and you got a high chance that it's not going to go well. Mm -hmm. And you got to stay focused and make sure you do your part to get them out of there. Otherwise, it could be catastrophic for whoever you're working with and then in turn for, for yourself. I called this a job earlier. It seems like that's the wrong word for it. Well, I would say any any job that is very involved would be, you know, you could classify it as more of a of a lifestyle. Yeah. People that want to become champions and whatever they pursue are completely immersed in what they're doing, and everybody else is. So it it, it adjusts the culture of what you're in. You're you're working with the group of people that this and their family is basically the only two things they got. So. Yeah. They, they try as hard as they can, and you know, it, it definitely goes more towards the, the lifestyle side of things. What's your favorite part of what you do? Well, that's, that's a hard question to, to answer, but I couldn't really say any one particular thing. So the, the whole package is what's enjoyable. Right now, I've been in, an instructor for uh, almost three years now, so I've really enjoyed being part of this process and it just morphs over time so when I go back to a, a boat team because I'm not at a boat team right now I'm gonna be working with guys that 
um, I was part of them going through selection. So my experience will be, you know, more rewarding as time goes on that I both get to do the job and I've been part of their career path and it just keeps on building on itself. It's great being part of that. Mm -hmm. I like the the day-to-day -day aspect and I think that that's important to, for people to remember that, that um, just the fact of training, for example, is great where you say you were, were training at night, practicing with, with night vision that you, you show up later on in the day, you get to go um, train and, and shoot guns and everything else that people would probably pay money to do and that's what we're getting paid to do and then a lot of the, people uh, pay to do the things that you're right <laughs> right so of course you know the missions are good and that's that's what we all want to do and it's important to remember too that we we get to enjoy the regular day-to-day -day as well because if you're just thinking about um, the, the mission that could be pretty draining so we're always training for the mission but you got to learn how to enjoy both training and the mission when it when it comes all about the journey yes <laughs> what else do you want to talk about what do you think is important for people to know I think it's important for people to know and to for the you know to become a SWIC is when you get here is to be short-sighted hmm. not in a bad way meaning <laughs> when the days get really hard to just focus on the current now and can you keep on going right now and when it feels overwhelming and let's say for example you're not a gifted runner and you're struggling on a run can you take one more step can you push yourself a little bit harder and most people will find that they do have a, a little bit more in the tank and if they start on that right now then they'll, they'll be in a good place months later when they get to here or when they're really cold at night time are you so cold that you absolutely need to be warmed up right now meaning are you at a health risk or is it just very uncomfortable and it, it will most likely just be that you are uncomfortable and and I am not suggesting for people to get themselves cold I, that is something that they need to just deal with when they have to however you can't um, train for that is no what you're there's no reason to be trained for that <laughs> so they just need to practice PT uh, physical training is what I mean by that working out as hard as they can, finding a quality program, and there's templates on the Seal Swick website, and learning how to swim, and just being more regimented, because they're going to be, one, entering in the military, and two, within a very quick time period, in a military selection course. So, mm -hmm. depending on what they did before enlisting, that's going to be a massive culture change, and you're in a selection course. So start becoming more regimented and hold yourself to high expectations throughout the day with everything you do. So everybody's had that feeling when they're, when they're working out or doing something challenging where, you know, like you said, it's can I take that next step? And I think, I don't know if everybody does this, but I feel like there's sort of a voice that talks to you. Do you, do you have that? Is there something that goes through your head? Well, I think for me personally, I can't speak for other people, but it'll be more of doubt or anxiety if I'm doing something that I really don't like. And I think that this will be a good point to bring up that, that if you are doing something challenging, let, let's say a long run, for example, yep. and you, you gave in a little bit and it's important to not beat yourself up about that. Meaning if you're in this training progress and you're you're trying to get much more physically fit you're hearing that you should ignore that voice and you don't well you don't want to go down the path of feeling like oh no now I can't um, accomplish this I think it's better to have small targets and constantly the constant improvement method I think is best so instead of if you've been doing nothing all of a sudden trying to match an ultra marathon runner that's not feasible but the constant micro improvements every day will help that that voice in your head and it's never going to go away so it's about knowing yourself knowing what type of personal anxiety or stress will happen to you at different points and just being much more self-aware each day so if you go through a day and feel like you didn't accomplish what you wanted have a little reflection time to think about why you didn't what you can do better next time 
everyone has those moments, right? right. And, and what you're saying is, if you don't get through it this time, don't double down on that. You right. know, just get back up. And right. Just always learn from it. Always learn from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to have mistakes. Everyone's going to have those weak moments. But how, what, how do you learn from them? How do you improve? And if you're constantly improving and have less of those, and mm -hmm. six months from now, then you'll be far, much more far along in, in your personal grit, you could say, or fortitude or capability of, of withstanding different challenges. Uh, since you became a SWIC, has that affected your personal life? Absolutely, I do believe it's improved. So right now, after being a, a SWIC for about 10 years, I feel capable of much more in my life's challenges, whatever it may be. So I, um, I feel more capable of personal challenges now. Uh, not only am I SWIC, I, I, I try to excel as much as I can in that. I'm also going to school on the side. I, on top of this full-time job, I have a family. I try to do my, my best to be a good husband and a father there. And I feel much more capable of, of accomplishing all those challenges. And, and I attribute that to a lot to the different stressors and everything that I've developed a lot more grit through this job. So you've gotten through the seven week course. You've been successful. You've been selected. Well, What's not next? quite. So next they got two additional phases of training before they are pinned as a, oh, as a SWIC operator. They've made a major milestone in the process. Getting that brown shirt is huge. Okay. And then they have two more phases that are each seven weeks. Uh, the next one is BCT, which stands for Basic Crewman Training. And that's where they learn e the fundamentals of weapon shooting. They start their process of shoot, move, communicate, where they learn more about engines, getting into the, the, the finer details. After that, the next seven week block is crewman qualification training, which we just abbreviate CQT. And in CQT is really where they start running in their training, meaning they start driving the 30 foot rib, they start shooting out on the boats, they start using radios, they, and they end up at the very end being able to do a much more realistic final training exercise and, and culminating all the skills, executing it themselves on that 30-foot craft. And once they're all done with that, that is when they will be pinned a SWIC and have the graduation ceremony. And, and after graduation, walk us through what, what, what is happening now? What, what's the next step? Like, how do you feel? What's going on? Well, the next step is you, you would re report to a boat team and start your journey there. But more on the feeling part is it's a very special great feeling of pride knowing that you look back and reflect on all the hard work you've done whether it be a year or longer of 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 preparation for this accomplishment and it's something that no one could ever take away from you mm -hmm. so you know yourself that through your own dedication and hard work you've achieved something great where um, you'll look back and realize how many people did not accomplish it through whatever reason it might have been and and that's something that that will stick with you for the rest of your life and do you start work, working up right away or it'll change for different people but you will you will show up to your prospective boat team and you'll get inoculated in in that that team culture where you will still be a you know you'll be a new guy and you'll have a lot to learn and a steep learning curve and the the job never ends with the learning and the effort never ends it's just you're you're continuing on your journey and you're getting closer to being able to deploy and do your job real world when you're pinned as a SWIC you're you're not quite a self-sufficient boat operator yet uh, you're you're you've got a lot to learn before you're before you're ready to deploy as a boat guy however you have validated that you've done what it takes to become a SWIC and you instantly are part of that that team and everyone brings you in and everybody knows that you've got what it takes to be here and it seems to me like uh, you guys you really support each other you want I mean it's, it's more than the average 
Absolutely. or choice in terms of support goes. Well, yeah, so everybody knows that you've been through that selection course and it brings an instant bond to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a different boat team or around different boat guys that you've never met, you have an instant bond with them and uh, you know you gravitate towards them if you're in a group of people that are a, a blend of boat guys and not boat guys. Of course, the boat guys are gonna come together and wanna talk and and uh, hear you know their past history of what they've done at the teams or different things and and that's another special thing that you know that you only get through going through this selection course and what's your first mission feel like well that will be different for a lot of people depending on what type of mission but it's a good feeling knowing that what you're doing is for the country or for that mission set there's very few people in the United States that are able to do that. So you're, you're being part of history, essentially. There's a huge amount of important jobs for the country, and this is absolutely not the only one. It's just that you know that you're being part of the greater system there in a, in a special way, and you've worked very hard to, to do it. So you're having direct impact, and you're, you're part of a, a huge amount of people that are, are part of that system that aren't just SWIX. And, and it's, it, uh, it's good to look back on in your life later on and know that, that you did that. What motivates you? It's always good to reflect and I know 30, 40 years from now when I'm not in this job anymore, I was part of that. So for example, if you read Vietnam was way before my day and you know, I, I, there's a lot of great people that helped out that and then I, I'm helping out in my current situation here the current conflicts and and you know my life was about more than just myself and after this job whatever other job I do if whatever it might be that these experiences can never be taken away incredible a life about more than just yourself yes pretend you're speaking to someone who's just like thinking about it in two sentences or three sentences what would you say to them why why would they want to join I would encourage anyone that is interested in being part of the U.S. military of special operations with, with small crafts, I like the idea of shooting big guns, driving fast boats, and, and this is a great career that they could have fun and do important, impactful work along the way. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And is there where, so you, you've mentioned a couple times, but just to make sure everyone knows, you think the best place to get information outside of this podcast would be the website? Absolutely. So that's the, the purpose of the Seal SWIC website. So we have people dedicated and that's their jobs to provide information. And that is by far better than the way I did it 10 years ago and just essentially look up hearsay. So if I had the opportunity 10 years ago to just get it straight from the source, that is what I would have done and what I recommend to anyone. Awesome. Thank you again. You're welcome. Find out more at sealswick.com and join us again for the next NSW podcast. Head drop, high drop.